So if you've ever visited this channel and watched videos before, you will probably know that I'm a sucker, absolute sucker for nostalgia. I, I love it. There's nothing better than something taking you back to happy moments and happy times. In fact, if I could say right now, I would love to go back to one year. 2001 might be that year for me. And we're going to talk about an album that came out that year on June 12th to be exact. And that was Blink-182's Take Your Pants Off and Jacket. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back, music lovers, especially my rock music lovers. That's right. Listen, Take Your Pants Off and Jacket by Blink-182, which came out June 12th of 2001. It's a cool-ass album in its own right. I mean, where Blink-182 was at that time was pretty much on top of the pop-punk world. Everything they did prior to that, leading up to it, just, just made them the kings of this time for that style of music. And honestly just in general for the style that they had, the personality they had, the things they were doing, the businesses they were venturing off into. I mean, it was it was everything about them in that time fits so well. And like I said, I love the 90s. I was a young child in the 90s and so many fond memories and such great music and, and great things to take you back and great memories. You know, I've often sat there and wondered what it'd like to, you know, grow up in the 80s because it was such a unique decade the neon decade, the big hair, the bright lights, the bright colors, the bright clothes, everything about the 80s always intrigues me. You know, that's when I was born, but I never got to really experience much from it. But so much about it intrigues me. You know, you go look back at the 60s. I see people talking about how music was back then, how carefree the world was back then. And everything about the 60s seems like it was such a pretty damn cool decade in its own right. The 70s as well. It's just each decade from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s to the 90s was so different. But it seemed like as we rolled into the 2000s, even though you can look back now and say it was definitely unique, which it absolutely was. And that's one of the main reasons like I would love to go back in time to that moment, early 2000s, 2001 to be exact, because this is the album we're talking about. And that was the year it came out. And for me, that was a special year, an awesome year, because that time in my life, Anybody else, if you were there, you know, we were still in that carefree moment as young kids. I mean, maybe we were going into our teenage years, but we were still kids. And, and, and it was such an amazing time. So I absolutely am going to have fun talking about this album. I can tell you right now, I can just feel it. And we haven't even really started. But the early 2000s really, I think, started a trend, which even though things have changed in the last 20 years, 24 years, I think the the big drastic changes of a decade, like I said, from the 60s, 70s, 80s to 90s, there was drastic changes between each decade. But once the 2000s rolled in, until now even, in 2024, it seemed like we stopped with the drastic decade changes and just kind of meshed together with a full-on three decades almost of small changes, but you know, the drastic changes would have been just as great. It, it doesn't matter. But you know what? Let's just get on with this video. You know, make no mistake about it. I mean, Blink-182 didn't get everything handed to them. I mean, they paid their dues like a lot of bands do. Some bands get extremely lucky. And I'm not saying they don't put in the work, but they might drop an album that explodes. I mean, from day one, they might have hit something that, you know, just straight gold. But that wasn't Blink-182 right away, but they definitely had a good mindset when they started out. They knew the style of music they loved and they wanted to play, and that's absolutely what they did. But it really wasn't up until 1997 when they released Dude Ranch that really, you know, they started to develop a strong fan base and really started to, you know, slowly walk in that door to the mainstream. And, and rightly so, because they released some badass music. I still remember hearing Damn It in elementary school thinking that, it was one of the coolest songs in the world and, and my buddy learned how to play the the drums for the song and it, it was awesome we go to his house he'd jump on his older brother's drum set and just you know it was cool until his brother came in there and got pissed off at us and kicked us out but it was just one of those things and it was an awesome memory even now to think back to but you know it, it took up until scott rayner the current drummer at the time when dude ranch was released and their original drummer Ended up leaving the band, and there's lots of reasons why, but at that time, current Aquabatch drummer, Travis Barker, ended up taking over before they released their hit album, 
Enema of the State in 1999. And that's when the guys really kicked that door down to the mainstream, walked right through it, and started right then and there to take over the world with their sound, who they were, their personality, and their style. I mean, you, you know all the hits off of Enema of the State, the singles, like What's My Age Again, Adam Song, All the Small Things, and no doubt hit songs. Still, for me, my favorite song off that album is Aliens Exist. Tom DeLonge wrote the song, and there's a reason why, because he's got a lot going on up here when it comes to aliens and extraterrestrial activity, but we're not going to dive into that, but that is a very cool rabbit hole to start diving down if you want to go check it out, but definitely it's, it's it's a very cool thing to look into but you know Enema of the State was so huge and, and, and even for me at, at that time that was one of those albums especially when you saw the video to all the small things and what's my age again they, they both basically breeded two I mean awesome things when you talk about one of them pretty much just making fun of what pop music was at the time when when they're making fun of you know I don't know, the Backstreet Boys, 98 Degrees, Britney Spears, and one of their music videos, and then you go to the next, and all three guys are running around town butt naked, and everybody's just looking at them like, what the hell are these guys doing? You couldn't help but watch both those videos for all the small things and what's my age again, and not laugh and think these dudes were full of balls and absolutely cool, and absolutely were. And if it wasn't for those guys, and if it wasn't for Tom, Mark, and Travis, I would have never went out and bought dicky shorts that went down past my knees. You wouldn't see me wearing a Hurley shirt or an Atticus shirt or a Macbeth shirt or a Volcom shirt. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't see these guys doing it. So they were a huge influence on me and a lot of kids my age at that time. But Enemy of the State was only the beginning because that led into what we're going to talk about today, which was the album that followed that up, June 12, 2001. Take your pants off and jacket. The guys from Blink-182 even got into the studio in 2000 to start recording this, this album. You know, you roll into 2001 before it was actually released, and you think about just how cool the times were then. And, and, and this is why I love when I talk to people older than me. I love to ask them, you know, you know, what was it like when you were 13, 14, 15? What year was it? How do you remember those times? And, and, and I love to hear people talk about it because you instantly, when you ask them that, because not a lot of people get asked that on a daily basis. And I find when I do it, sometimes, and it's a cool feeling to watch their eyes light up and you can just see their mind racing, thinking about you know, all the cool things they did when they were younger and how fun it was to be in whatever time it was, whatever year it was, whatever decade it was. You can see it in their eyes and, and you see the joy just... I mean, beaming out of them when they're talking about it, whatever it is. And for me, talking about like 2001, it, it just, I get excited thinking about it. You know, you, you think about some of the most amazing movies that came out in that time. You got your first Lord of the Rings movie, which was so huge at that time. I mean, almost three hours long, but well worth it. And, and, and you just anticipated the next one, just like you were anticipating the next Blink-182 album. The first Harry Potter Harry Potter, Harry Potter movie in the franchise. I remember being so intrigued by that and, and thinking it was such a cool because I never read the books. My friends were reading the books while I was in junior high. I wasn't reading them, but I remember them all talking about it and being kind of jealous because I wasn't in on it. But I didn't like to read much at the time. But when the movie came out, I got to watch it and got to see what all the fuss was about. And it was absolutely amazing. And then for the rest of the franchise, you know, I watched them all and I watched them all multiple times. But the Xbox, the PS2, the Sega Dreamcast, you know, just being able to sit down and play any of those. I own the PS2, but I go to my friend's house to play the Dreamcast. We used to have so much damn fun. It was it was awesome. I mean, the Pokemon cards, the Game Boy Color, the Pokemon games, you know, going on Friday or Saturday night with my aunt or my grandma to Blockbuster Video. And I remember just walking in the doors, the smell of the video store. And I'd spend most of my time walking around just looking at all these movies and reading the back and not even really knowing if I wanted to get a movie, just having so much fun walking in the store and the atmosphere. And I miss that so much. And don't get me wrong, the convenience nowadays of Netflix or all these streaming platforms where you can pretty much just at will get any movie you want or listen to any album you want. It's awesome, don't get me wrong. But nothing beats walking into that video store and just... You know, the pros and the cons. The movie you want's not in. Um, they just, 
they don't have the movie you want so you might go to like a hollywood video i don't know if every state had that but we had them in texas it was just you know the second option to blockbuster if you weren't getting what you needed but man i miss walking into a video store man the, there's nothing like it in 2001 was prime for all those things and then blink 182 we knew they were in the studio we knew they were going to release another album and the anticipation was just so sick I mean, you can just feel everything i said was so exciting but 2001 also gave it gave us a really dark moment especially if you live in the united states and american history it gave us one of our darkest days and i remember not understanding what the hell was going on at the time but i remember being in class and my math teacher running in and telling another teacher who i think we were in reading class and the look on his face was just it was just i mean it looked like he was scared to death and as a young kid you're like what the hell's going on and they turn on the tv and you see this tower in new york city smoking because a plane just ran into it and then you're just sitting there watching that coverage they send everybody home and then you see another plane hit the tower next to it i'm talking about the world trade center the twin towers and then you see them crumble and everything after that just your heart breaks and even think about it today 23 years later my heart breaks but even with the darkest moment in that year it was still an amazing year but once the guys completed the recording of take your pants off and jacket their promotional single was released on may 7th of 2001 it was the song the rock show now everything about the song is badass but what makes it even more badass is when they released the music video for it the music video is so cool now the theme in the video and i don't even know if this is actually true this is what they made us to believe i haven't actually heard anybody come out and say it was just staged that was actually the intent of the video but if there is an interview out there if somebody knows of it please you know send it to me i'd love to know but they pretty much said as the video started they got a five hundred thousand dollar budget for this music video but instead of doing anything creative and actually making you know some sort of you know theme to this music video like some sort of storyline they took that five hundred thousand dollars and the whole point of the video was them running around spending this money as they wished and doing nothing but that now they took this five hundred thousand dollars and they were giving the money out to strangers on the streets they were just walking up giving the money out they were throwing money off the rooftops they were taking homeless people homeless men to get their hair cut, go to the spa, get cleaned up, look nice and sharp. They were paying dancers to go mow people's lawns in very risque clothing or more like a lactor of clothing, but it, it was an awesome music video. I mean, everything they did in it was awesome and that made the song even more awesome. And now listening to it now, I listened to like, you know, the part of the song where it says, I couldn't wait for the summer at the Warped Tour. That was the first time that I saw her there, you know, as many times as I went to the Warp Tour, and now that it's no longer in existence, it kind of sucks because I had so many great memories there. The Warp Tour was awesome. Every summer when it came through, it was one of the most amazing moments of the summer. And every time I hear that part of the song, not only does it make me realize how cool of a song it is and how cool the times were when that album was released, it makes me realize other moments that were just as awesome at that time. But no doubt The Rock Show was the perfect single. To kick off this album so one of the first things about the album that is amazing is the title take your pants off and jacket which is clearly a tongue-in-cheek pun on male masturbation which is it was absolutely funny when you're in junior high i mean there was no doubt about it it was the perfect thing especially if you went and asked hey can you buy this album for me uh it's blink 182 take your pants off and jacket what did you just say it, it was great running around school saying it and teachers telling you to stop saying it because clearly they knew what the hell you were saying but that wasn't you know wasn't what it was actually meaning blah 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 it was just funny as hell great name perfect blink 182 album cover i mean the name was amazing and then the next two singles stay together for the kids and first date amazing tracks first date is one of my favorite music videos i love that absolutely funny as hell that's just how these guys roll i mean two of my favorite tracks off the album are reckless abandon and story of a lonely guy absolutely awesome tracks i mean the album is full of great tracks but this, well, the next thing is, as great as this album did, there was more pressure coming from the record label. I mean, you had it coming from End of a State, but there was a lot more pressure coming once Take Your Pants Off a Jacket was released and it got all the success right out the gate that it did. 
it's not hard to kind of understand a record label, which theirs was MCA at the time, both when they released Enemy of the State and Take Your Pants Off a Jacket. When you release a great album and you follow it up with another great album, I mean, your label's probably thinking, we struck gold here with this band. Let's, let's milk this thing for all it's worth. And granted, they did release their next album in 2003, which was also another amazing album. But the problem was, with this album, Take Your Pants Off and Jacket, there was a seed planted there. I firmly believe this is the time it was planted. Because you had all this pressure from the label. That kind of forced, you know, Tom DeLonge to do something, which he did, and that was starting a side project in the band Boxcar Racer. You know, he did bring along Travis Barker to play drums in the band, especially while they were recording this debut album. But Mark Hoppus wasn't invited, and Tom DeLonge did say there was nothing intentional or malice about it. But, you know, Hoppus did kind of feel a sting from that. And, you know, even though it didn't seem like nothing, it was something. And then you had Travis Barker going and teaming up with Tim Armstrong with the transplants and jamming out with them. So there was something there, even though it didn't seem like it. And even though they did two years later release another amazing album, but it'd be eight years before they released another one. And obviously there was a point where Tom DeLonge was out of the band in that moment. But before all that even happened, you had the amazing moment with Take Your Pants Off and Jacket. Amazing album. Two times platinum certified. You couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, you could, but I mean, you just got some of the best praise in the world because this album was universally loved all over the world. These guys were still on top of the world, even after releasing Enema of the State, where you think there might be a dip. There wasn't a real big dip. And then they stayed right where they were at. And for the masses, for that time, Blink-182 was on top of the world. And when you thought they were going to falter, they didn't. And they gave me some fine members of that album. And I'm sure they did it for a lot of you out there as well. But anyway, I just felt like it was time to talk about this album. It was time to talk about how amazing 2001 was. And just, if there was a time we could go back to for myself, that would be absolutely the year. The ups and the downs, it wouldn't matter. It was an amazing time, especially for me and especially for the United States. But anyway... Thank you guys for coming and watching. I really appreciate it. Go out there, take care of your friends and family. Do something amazing. We all got something we want to do, and, and there's nothing holding us back but ourself. So get rid of the excuses, man. Th this life is, well, we don't know if it's short or not, but I'm sure when it's all said and done, we'll think it was short anyway. So go out there and do the things you want to do. Fucking go for it. Go for something. I'm encouraging you right now because this what I'm doing right now is me going for something. So until next time, take care of yourself. I am out.